On a hot and sunny day, Taoju Basara, a teenager, is enjoying some quality time with his father, Taoju Jin. However, things start to get awkward when Jin brings up Basara's childhood desire for a couple of cute sisters. Unexpectedly, Jin reveals that Basara has two younger stepsisters who are about to join them for lunch. This revelation doesn't settle well with Basara, and in a state of nervousness, he goes to use the restroom. To his surprise, as Basara enters the restroom, he finds a hot girl doing her business. In a state of panic, his eyes gaze upon the important sign on the door stating to knock before entering due to the broken door lock. Trying to explain the situation and calm her down, Basara puts his hand on the young girl's mouth, but it earns him a slap on the face. The commotion is heard by Jin, who rushes into the restroom with another young girl. Later, at the table, Narus Maria and Narus Mio both formally introduce themselves. In the meantime, Jin tells Basara that their mother Chihaya is out on some business matters. The next day, Mio goes to wake Basara up from his sleep in a fun way, which leaves Basara in a tricky spot. Things get more awkward as Mio finds an inappropriate stepsister game in his room. She instantly thinks of Basara as a pervert. And to make matters worse, Basara trips over and falls on Mio, fueling the fire even more. Soon, Mio leaves the room, frustrated by Basara's perceived perverted nature. In reality, all of it was just a mere coincidence. The entire situation forces Basara to remember the weight of his responsibility, as he recalls Jin's words from the earlier evening, advising him to protect his younger sisters. Jin also reveals that the two girls were constantly bullied by weirdos at their previous school, which drove Mara to skip school altogether. Jin hopes that their new school and a new environment alongside Basara will help the two girls lead a normal life. Determined to protect his sisters, Basara heads downstairs, where he encounters Maria in an apparent outfit that excites him, being a true man of culture. It also allows Maria to tease him about the game in his room, which was meant as a housewarming gift, surprising Basara and making him question the morality of his newly found sister. In the evening, Basara accompanies Mio to the grocery store, where they encounter a trio of bullies. After teaching them a lesson, Basara takes Mio to a secret spot with a beautiful view he recently discovered. During the night, Jin drops a bombshell by announcing his sudden departure to Dubai for some freelance work. Before leaving, Jin hands the responsibility of protecting the two girls to Basara. After his departure, Basara enters the house and feels that the entire atmosphere has changed. Things go upside down as Maria suddenly attacks Basara with magic, revealing herself to be a demon, and introduces Mio as the future demon lord. After revealing their true nature, Maria unravels the mystery, explaining that they used magic to feed a nonsensical story to Jin, and now they plan to do the same to Basara, using their new house as their base in the human world. Mara proceeds to use a magic spell on Basara, but for some unknown reason, the spell fails. After giving it a few tries, Basara reveals himself to be a hero. He uses his superior strength and instantly immobilizes the two demons. In the end, Basara decides to show mercy by telling them to leave his house. After putting an end to the situation, Basara calls Jin to reveal the entire story. Surprisingly, he was already aware of Mio's situation. He explains to Basara that Mio is the only child of the peace-loving demon Lord Wilbert, and to hide her from his enemies. He sent Mio to the human world to be raised by humans. He tells Basara to take care of Mio, as the present demon lord is after the great power she inherited from Wilbert. Meanwhile, Mio and Maria are attacked by an unknown demon, putting them in great peril. At that moment, Basara shows up and defeats the demon. He then tells them to come home. With the demonic beast defeated, Basara escorts the girls back to their home. He has a heartfelt conversation with Maria, where he reveals that his father was aware of their situation all along and made the decision to protect them. Maria is relieved by these words and starts unpacking their belongings. Meanwhile, Basara knocks on the restroom door, showing that he's a fast learner. He apologizes to Mio for his earlier outburst, not fully understanding her circumstances. Suddenly, Mio feels dizzy and collapses, prompting Basara to rush into the restroom. Mio initially refuses to accept his apology, as she was the one who tried to deceive them with her magic. To ease her guilt, Basara apologizes for concealing his true identity, stating that they are now even. Their conversation is interrupted by Maria, who playfully teases them for being less reserved around each other. She also mentions that negating someone's magic is not something an ordinary hero can do. 
However, Basara downplays his abilities, claiming that negating Maria's magic was just a fortunate accident. Later, in her room, Mio reflects on Basara's words and asks Maria about the true intentions behind Jin's and Basara's recent actions. In a brief response, Maria assures her that their intentions are pure, and they desperately need allies. While discussing their next move, Maria comes up with a plan to ensure Basara's loyalty. She gathers Mio and Basara under the mesmerizing full moon to create a master-servant pact between them. Maria helps Mio create the magic circle since she lacks magical knowledge, and the spell begins. Maria explains that a magic circle will appear on the back of Mio's hand, and to complete the pact, Basara must kiss it. However, things don't go as planned, and the magic circle appears on Basara's hand instead, making him the master of Mio. Despite this unexpected turn, Mio refuses to abide by the spell and kisses Basara's hand to show her loyalty, resulting in the curse of the pact being activated. In a state of panic, Maria discloses that she is a succubus devil and her interference altered the pact spell. The only way to stop the curse now is for Basara to touch Mio's body. With no other option, Basara hesitantly touches Mio's body in an attempt to break the curse. Finally, the curse on Mio is lifted, and she confronts Maria for not mentioning the curse beforehand. She takes Maria inside the room for a long chat. The next morning, Mio and Basara head to school. During introductions, Yuki, the class representative, approaches Basara and hugs him, as it seems to be normal for them. This scene causes a commotion in class, but things escalate when Mio, out of jealousy, reveals that she lives with Basara. After class, Basara becomes acquainted with Takagawa, who sympathizes with him for having a rough day. The two decide to have lunch together in a secret spot at the academy, where Takagawa fills Basara in on the ins and outs of the school. After a long day at school, Yuki meets Basara privately to warn him about Mio. In a desperate attempt to watch over Mio, the hero clan assigned Yuki to monitor the mid-S rank target constantly. To her surprise, Basara reveals that he and Jin were already aware of Mio's situation from the beginning. He explains that Mio's parents were murdered because of their claim to the throne. Basara declares that he will protect Mio even though he has lost his previous power. Apologizing for his past actions, Basara admires Mio's ability to face her past and look towards the future, while he has only known how to run away. Her determination strengthens his resolve to protect her. Upon returning home, Basara explains everything to Mio and Maria, recounting his conversation with Yuki. However, Maria interrupts with concerns about Basara conspiring behind their backs. To deepen their bond and build trust, Maria suggests that the three of them take a bath together. This unexpected suggestion causes Basara to have a nosebleed and faint. The next day, Mio and Basara attend school. After their classes, the teacher asks Yuki and Basara to help organize the summer assignments. This makes Mio jealous and triggers the curse within her. Suddenly, Mio collapses in Basara's arms. He quickly carries her to the infirmary where Chisato, the head nurse, diagnoses her with a mild fever. Chisato warns Basara about making enemies on his first day and advises him to choose his allies and enemies carefully. This odd advice leaves Basara feeling uneasy. Meanwhile, Mio pleads with Basara not to leave her alone. He calls Takagawa to handle the assignments in his place. Later, Basara meets Takagawa to express his gratitude. To his surprise, a group of stray demons infiltrates the school. Basara unsheathes his swords and defeats the demons, clearing the way. He then uses the Master Servant Pack to quickly reach Mio's location. Meanwhile, Yuki takes Mio to the rooftop to confront her and tell her to stay away from Basara. Seeing Mio's stubborn nature, Yuki decides to use force, and Mio responds with her magic. After a short battle, Yuki reveals that Basara had to sacrifice his companions to protect the hero village, resulting in him losing his powers and experiencing pain when wielding a sword. Fortunately, Basara arrives on the rooftop just in time to prevent the situation from escalating. However, before he can confront Yuki, a mysterious demon appears. The demon exposes the truth about Basara's battles with low-level demons to prevent Mio from becoming a target. The demon demands that Mio surrender the power of the demon lord. He attacks Mio from behind, forcing Basara to jump in front of the attack. After severely injuring Basara, the mysterious demon reminds Mio of her mistakes, blaming her for Basara's pain and burdening her with guilt. He offers her a choice to end everyone's suffering by surrendering the power of the demon lord to him. Following the brutal battle, Basara is taken home where Maria tends to his wounds. To Mio's relief, Maria informs her that Basara's pulse has returned to normal. Mio decides to leave the room, allowing Basara to rest. To Maria's astonishment, Basara regains consciousness shortly afterward. He recounts his childhood training and shares his past with Maria. 
In the hero village, Basara was recognized as a prodigious child. During swordsmanship practice, the village elder visited to assess the potential of the next generation. At that time, a scout arrived with distressing news, Sado, a fellow member of the village dissatisfied with the truce between heroes and demons, had released the seal of the sacred demon sword Brynhildr. Worse yet, Sado's body was now possessed by the malevolent spirits inhabiting the sword, and he was heading toward the village where the children resided. With Jin away on a mission, Basara intervened just in time, defeating Sado and saving the village. Back in the present, Basara experiences a wave of unease and asks Maria to check on Mio. Suddenly, Maria's loud scream startles Basara as she reveals that Mio is missing. Maria implores Basara to use the Master Servant Pact to locate Mio, as he is the only one with such power. Meanwhile, in the forest, Mio leaves herself vulnerable and encounters the mysterious demon. Believing she can fight alone, Mio attacks, but the demon blackmails her by threatening to destroy Basara's house, forcing her into submission. With all hope seemingly lost, Mio prepares to be transported to the demon realm. However, Yuki arrives just in time to rescue her. Yuki utilizes her powers to battle the demon while internally acknowledging Basara's reasons for protecting Mio. Despite her determination, Yuki's strength proves futile against the demon's might. She manages to destroy the barrier surrounding the demon by striking a specific point, but soon finds herself cornered by a life-threatening attack. In the nick of time, Basara arrives, wielding Brynhildr and using Banishing Shift, a feared ability that sends everything into the Zero Dimension. With his unique power, Basara gains the upper hand, causing the demon to recognize him as a serious threat. However, it is too late, and with Maria's assistance, Basara defeats the demon, or so he thinks. Unexpectedly, Basara is caught off guard and receives a fatal blow, triggering Mio's dormant powers. Mio loses control over her powers, becoming a threat that could potentially destroy the world. With no other choice, Basara utilizes his banishing shift to eliminate the excess energy within Mio's body, successfully resolving the situation. The following day, Basara confronts Takagawa at school, seeking answers about his true intentions. After persistent questioning, Takagawa reveals that he was sent to the human realm by the current demon lord to awaken Mio's true powers. After a lengthy discussion, the two reluctantly make a temporary truce. Meanwhile, deep in the forest, Jin converses with a mysterious individual, instructing them to keep an eye on Basara. Reflecting on himself, Jin realizes that Basara cannot escape his past or his destiny. The next day, Basara wakes up to a world filled with excitement, finding Maria in her bed. As he heads downstairs, Basara accidentally opens the restroom door only to discover Mio inside, a nostalgic encounter that ends with Basara receiving a shock from Mio's lightning magic. But the surprises continue as Yuki sneaks in to wash Basara's back. After cleaning up the mess, Basara sets out to treat Takagawa to some BBQ in exchange for information. At the restaurant, Takagawa enjoys the meal while expressing concern for Basara's finances. He reveals that the demon realm is sending more reinforcements to investigate rumors of Mio's awakening as a demon lord. These reinforcements will make it harder for Takagawa to cooperate with Basara in the future. He also unveils some secrets about the Master Servant Pact, explaining that Basara and Mio can grow stronger together if their bond strengthens. However, he delivers a worrisome revelation about the curse, warning that it will become unbearable if Mio is captured by the enemy, potentially leading to her death. Their conversation is interrupted by Chisato, who joins them for a meal. She confesses to being a big fan of Jin's photography. After a lengthy chat, the trio leaves the restaurant. Along the way, Chisato inquires about the peculiar conversation Basara had with Takagawa. Flustered, Basara claims they were discussing a game. They find a spot by the riverbank, where Chisato advises Basara to take things easy and determine what he truly wants to protect. Before leaving, she performs a peculiar protection spell, which turns out to be a charm from her former village. Meanwhile, Takagawa meets with Valga, the reinforcement sent from the demon realm. Valga insists on getting a closer look at the situation, but Takagawa warns him that making the wrong moves could prove deadly. Shortly after, Zest, Marquis Zalja's right-hand woman, appears. She reveals that she is operating under the orders of the Demon Lord and demands Takagawa's assistance. On the other side, the hero village sends three additional heroes and upgrades Mio's status from observation to an elimination target. The following day, Basara encounters trouble with some bullies at school who constantly pester him about Mio, 
and Yuki. Luckily, his teacher arrives just in time to resolve the situation. Meanwhile, Yuki approaches Basara to ask him out on a date. On another front, the three heroes closely monitor the school Mio attends. The date between Yuki and Basara begins as they head to a shopping mall. However, they soon encounter some bothersome salespeople. Fortunately, Mio and Maria come across them at the mall. Surprisingly, Yuki asks for Mio's help in choosing an outfit. While shopping, Yuki gets separated from the group, and Kirumi aggressively warns her to stay away from Mio. Meanwhile, Basara and the others grow increasingly worried about Yuki's whereabouts. Basara realizes that if they had a master servant pact, he could locate Yuki at any time. Just then, Valga arrives and launches an attack causing Basara to lose his composure as he suspects Valga is involved in Yuki's disappearance. Basara tries to fight back but soon realizes his own lack of strength. Even when Basara, Maria, and Mio combine their efforts, they are unable to phase Valga. As Valga is about to unleash a deadly attack, he is unexpectedly killed from behind by Takashi. To Basara's surprise, Shiba and Kirumi appear, along with Yuki. Initially, Basara believes the three of them are there to monitor Mio but they reveal that Mio's status has been upgraded and they are actually there to eliminate Basara. The heroes decide to leave the situation untouched since they have no intention of destroying the city. Before departing, Shiba informs Basara that their battle will take place one week from that day at a new location. During the night, Basara calls Jin to explain the situation. Jin advises Basara to give his all and defeat the three heroes, as they exiled him from the village. He also asks Jin to keep a watchful eye on Basara. The following day, Basara begins training with Mio and Maria, discussing the weaknesses of each of their enemies. Meanwhile, Kirumi desperately questions why Yuki spent so much time with Mio and the traitor Basara. On the other hand, Takashi reminisces about the fond memories he shared with Basara, but he is reminded of the tragedy that occurred five years ago. Back at the house, Maria suggests various methods to strengthen the bond between Basara and Mio in order for them to grow stronger. After engaging in various exercises, their bond finally starts to grow, making their efforts fruitful. The next day, Basara and Mio head to school. After class, Basara explains the entire situation to Takagawa, stating that he will intervene in their match if the heroes pose a threat to Mio. This statement sparks a heated argument between the two. In the evening, Yuki approaches Basara in an attempt to convince him to withdraw, but her efforts are in vain as Basara refuses to back down. With no other options, Yuki reveals the location of their match and leaves. The group then heads to the designated duel site, where they meet up with the other heroes. After reuniting with Basara and the others, Takashi creates a barrier around the city. Unexpectedly, he transports Shiba out of the barrier to prevent him from recklessly interfering in their battle. A long-awaited clash between heroes and demons commences. Basara launches the attack with a hidden agenda to separate Kirumi from her group. Once he accomplishes this, Mio and Maria lure Takashi into a building to buy time. Meanwhile, Kirumi uses the power of wind spirits to strike at Basara. He manages to dodge the initial attacks, but due to his compassionate nature, Kirumi is able to knock him against a wall. In a desperate situation, Basara utilizes Banishing Shift to sever Kirumi's connection to the elementals she controls. With her control disrupted, Basara delivers a decisive blow, causing Kirumi to fall. Just in time, Basara catches her, saving her from harm. Shortly after, Yuki appears and uses a sleeping incense to induce a deep slumber in Basara. She entrusts his safety to Kirumi and departs. On the other battlefield, Takashi underestimates the strength of both Maria and Mio, finding himself in a precarious position. With no alternative, Takashi unleashes the full power of his divine weapon, pushing Maria and Mio to their limits. However, the battle is far from over as Yuki intervenes, proclaiming her intention to protect Mio and Maria due to Basara's attachment to them. Meanwhile, Mio rushes to Basara's side, reminding him of the reasons why he wields his sword and emphasizing that he is the only one capable of defeating Takashi. With this powerful reminder, Basara awakens from his slumber. On the other hand, Takashi fights ruthlessly against his childhood friend Yuki, relying on his divine weapon to overpower both Maria and Yuki. Thankfully, his final attack is halted by Brynhildr. Basara attempts to remind Takashi of their bonds, but consumed by hatred, Takashi turns a blind eye to everything. The main battle intensifies as Basara skillfully evades Takashi's attacks and launches a barrage of strikes with his superior speed. As a result, Takashi's divine weapon, Bayako, spirals out of control. In a bid to save its wielder, Bayako reveals its true form as a guardian spirit. 
In order to prevent disaster, Basara reveals that Bayako is a defensive guardian beast that won't attack unless provoked. However, Yuki points out that Bayako's power could rupture the barrier, leading to a catastrophic disaster in the city. To halt Bayako's rampage, Yuki attacks with her Sakuya, providing Basara the opportunity to use Banishing Shift to transport the excess power to the Null Realm, ultimately restoring Bayako to its original form. Meanwhile, Shiba returns after spectating the battle, stating that their mission is temporarily suspended. He raises a concerning point, noting that unjustly executing Mio would damage the spirits and gods who protect the heroes. Despite hearing his side, Takashi remains stubborn, refusing to yield. This prompts Shiba to become serious and warn Takashi about the consequences his actions would bring. In the end, Shiba takes the heroes away while revealing his intention to observe until the end. The following day, Basara and Mio resume their daily routine and attend school. Despite everything seeming great, Basara feels down because Yuki has returned to the village. After a long day at school, Basara and Mio return home to find Yuki cooking her special beef stew in the kitchen. Yuki reveals that the village elders have reinstated Mio's status as a surveillance target following a call they received from Jin. She also announces that she will be living in their house as an observer. During dinner, Maria suggests that Yuki and Basara enter a master-servant pact on the next full moon. The next morning, Basara goes to school accompanied by Mio and Yuki. A friendly rivalry ensues between Yuki and Mio as they both try to get closer to Basara. As the day progresses, Basara comes across Maria on the school grounds and suspects that she's up to some mischief. Confronting Maria, she confesses her true intentions of casting a spell in the girl's dressing room, claiming it's for Mio's protection. While exploring the school with a mischievous succubus, Basara finds himself in the girl's dressing locker, where he is caught off guard by Mio. Sensing the situation, Maria suggests an exercise to strengthen their bond, making them even stronger. In the evening, Basara discovers Maria secretly talking to Takagawa. When questioned about the encounter, she casually explains it was a coincidence, and Basara accepts her response without suspicion. Meanwhile, Zest, a demon following the orders of the present demon lord, learns about the incident involving Mio's rampage. She privately discloses that Basara is Jin's only son and possesses immense power capable of erasing the demon lord's previous magic. Zest's master initiates a plan to deal with Mio and Basara. In the middle of the night, under the light of the young full moon, Maria creates a magic circle for the master servant pact between Basara and Yuki. The magic circle appears on Basara's hand, but Yuki refuses to give him the kiss of loyalty, wanting to emulate the situation when Mio made her pact. This situation prompts Basara to fulfill Yuki's special request to calm her down. Meanwhile, Zest closely observes Basara and becomes envious of his relationship with the others. The next morning, while playing sports, Basara experiences sudden pain in his arm. He seeks treatment from Chisato who applies a bandage and explains that he must remove the bandage with her permission. She then moves on by stating that Basara's treatments would be better if done by her than those offered by any hospital. Chisato asks Basara about his stress levels and advises him to take things easy and focus on addressing problems before they arise to ensure the safety of his loved ones. Later, in the men's dressing room, Basara reviews his earlier with Chisato, making her more mysterious than ever before. All of a sudden, Sakaki approaches Basara and asks about his dating life. She then reveals her true feelings for Basara, hoping for a chance to go on a date with him. Suddenly, Mio and Yuki enter the dressing room, and Yuki quickly realizes that Sakaki is being controlled by someone. Basara rushes to Mio's side, only to find Zest near her. In an instant, Zest kidnaps Mio and Maria, and in an attempt to locate Mio, Basara tries to use the Master Servant Pact. However, he can only sense Yuki's location for some unknown reason. In the Demon Realm, Mio is held captive by Zalja in his private mansion, where Maria comes clean, revealing herself to be a servant of Zalja. She then delivers a message from the Demon Lord, Leo, summoning Zalja to the royal capital for a ruin inspection, since he his expertise in ancient magic is second to none in the Demon Realm. Strangely, Zalja chooses to hide the fact that he has captured Mio. Back in the human realm, Basara confronts Takagawa for information and recalls the day Maria spoke to her in secret. Takagawa advises Basara that he should have been more cautious. Takagawa explains that Maria was initially sent to protect Mio but later joined forces with Zalja because he had captured Maria's mother. Furthermore, Takagawa reveals that Maria was the one who reversed the master-servant pact between Basara and Mio. Upon hearing Takagawa's side of the story, Basara starts a fight, forcing Takagawa to reveal the location where Mio is being held captive. Unexpectedly, Basara is captured by Takagawa, 
who then meets with Zest to make a proposal. Takagawa offers Basara to Zest in exchange for Mio. Meanwhile, in Zalja's private mansion, Maria informs Mio that a magic barrier created by Zalja is preventing Basara from locating her. Outside the mansion, Takagawa threatens to reveal Zalja's betrayal to His Excellency the Demon Lord, forcing Zest's hand. The planned exchange between Zest and Takagawa takes an unexpected turn when Zest kills Takagawa instead of agreeing to the exchange. With Basara now in her possession, Zest brings him inside Zalja's private mansion. She orders Maria to use her succubus magic to manipulate Basara's mind. However, to Basara's surprise, he regains consciousness and finds himself being targeted by Maria's magic. Maria refuses to listen to any pleas, as her mother is being held hostage by Zalja. Meanwhile, in the human world, Yuki recalls Basara's plan to infiltrate the enemy's ranks. In the demon realm, Basara engages in a battle with Maria, hoping to free her from Zalja's control. On the other hand, Yuki infiltrates the mansion to confront Zest. She explains that Basara already figured that Zalja used a magic barrier to sever the connection of the Master Servant Pact. So he planned to infiltrate the mansion to destroy the barrier from the inside. Upon entering the premise, Basara used his banishing shift to dismantle the barrier around the mansion. In the midst of the fight, Mio manages to escape and joins Yuki in the battle. She discovers that Maria's mother is being held captive by the enemy. The two allies launch a joint attack, but their efforts fall short of making a breakthrough. Meanwhile, Zest adopts a defensive stance, fearing that she might harm Mio. She attempts to use the curse of the Master Servant Pact to her advantage, but Mio's determination remains unshakable. Eventually, Mio realizes that Zest is envious of the relationship they share with Basara. In another room, Maria relentlessly attacks Basara while he adamantly refuses to fight back. After a heartfelt speech, Basara manages to convince Maria to fight for the sake of her mother. On the other battlefield, Zalja arrives and overwhelms both Mio and Yuki with his immense power. He directs his anger towards Yuki and Zest for allowing the situation to unfold. Just as the situation seems dire, Basara appears and, using his banishing shift, nullifies Zalja's magic. However, to everyone's astonishment, Zalja employs mind magic to gain control over Basara. After manipulating Basara, Zalja begins to insult Jin, Basara's father and the renowned war god. These disparaging words awaken a surge of anger within Basara, enabling him to break free from Zalja's control. The intense battle between Basara and Zalja commences, with Basara unleashing powerful attacks and skillfully countering Zalja's every move using his banishing shift. However, despite his efforts, Basara's strength appears insignificant in the face of the mighty demon. Zalja resorts to another mind control spell to completely immobilize Basara. Just as all hope seems lost, Maria arrives in an enhanced form to intervene. Witnessing her newfound power, Zalja reveals that he has already killed Basara's mother, sending shockwaves through everyone present. This news triggers the awakening of Mio's demonic powers, causing her to go on a rampage. To halt Mio's destructive frenzy, Zalja employs an anti-magic barrier to restrain her. However, he soon realizes that Mio's own powers have awakened and he cowers in fear, pleading for mercy. In the midst of the chaos, Basara regains his consciousness and rushes to stop Mio from killing Zalja. Meanwhile, Zalja takes advantage of the distraction and attempts to escape. To his surprise, he finds himself face to face with Takagawa, who reveals that Zest only killed one of his decoys. Furthermore, Takagawa discloses that he helped Maria's mother escape by swapping her with a decoy. This was part of the deal he made with Basara. In exchange, Takagawa asked Basara to let him kill Zalja using his own hands. It turns out that Zalja was responsible for the death of Mio's foster parents, a couple who had cared for many demon children after the Great War including Takagawa. Suddenly, the mansion undergoes a transformation, taking on the form of a monster from the demon realm that feeds on life energy. Inside the monstrous body, Zest takes Basara, Mio, and Yuki to the core of the creature with the intention of erasing its existence. The journey to the center of the monster begins. Zest uses her magic to forcefully create a path forward. Meanwhile, the monster's immune system activates in an attempt to stop Basara and the others from progression. The amount of monsters inside the beast's body increases by the second, which forces Yuki to separate from the group in order to fend them off. Upon reaching the lower levels, Basara and the others encounter strange demon dolls who look a lot like Zest. After a lengthy journey, 
Basara, Mio and Zest finally reach the core of the monster but their troubles begin when the monster's self-defense mechanism activates, defending against all attacks. The group is thrown into a desperate situation. To make things easy, Zest reveals that she is a prototype doll made by Zalja, thus her life holds little meaning. She plans on sacrificing herself for the greater good. The monster attacks, as Zest moves forward but Basara refuses to let her sacrifice herself. He uses his superior speed to save Zest and then he completely obliterates the monster's existence using his banishing shift. Meanwhile, outside, Zalja realizes that all hope of victory has been lost. Basara, seizing the opportunity, slips away from the others to meet with Takagawa and witness Zalja's final moments. Despite Zalja's desperate pleas for mercy he plans to make a deal with Basara promising to provide him with information which Takagawa couldn't dream to dig up. His gruesome pleas were annoying for Takagawa's ears. He asks for Basara permission and upon receiving it, he executes Zalja. With the battle concluded, Basara and his companions return to their home. He first encounters Yuki, who raises questions about their future path. Next, Basara speaks with Zest, urging her to find a way to embrace her new life. Eventually, Zest agrees to follow any orders given to her by Basara. Later, Mio warmly welcomes Basara back home, but a strange voice inside Basara's head begins to manipulate him. Despite this, they all resume their usual activities. During the night, Zest and Maria's mother are taken back to the demon realm by allies of the previous demon king. The following morning, Basara and the others go back to their daily lives. Meanwhile, Jin finds himself seated on the demon lord's throne, ready to confront Leo and seek retribution for his transgressions. 